the street where you live, Almora Road. Now, where does that name come from? This fellow wanted to know what's in a name, so we decided to investigate and let him know. An Auckland City Council website reveals that the name Almora came from a Colonel Arthur Morrow in 1863. Having lived in Almora Road for 40 years, naturally our curiosity was aroused. We recall that some 30 or so years ago we were told by old Joe, an octogenarian who lived most of his life in the street, that many officers from the British Indian Army settled in Epsom after their retirement and brought with them cuttings of rhododendron and other trees from northern India. One of the towns in the area is Almora, and an adjacent street, Gilgit Road, is also named after a town in India. With Khyber Pass Road not too far away, Old Joe's comments seemed to fit his story. Our assumption, therefore, was that Colonel Arthur Morrow was one of those retired officers. However, checking up on the life history of Arthur Morrow, we discovered that he has never been in India. He was born in 1843 at Corabula House in County Longford, Ireland, and together with his parents and siblings, then an 18-year-old lad, sailed to Auckland in the bark Mercy. In Auckland, he worked as a draftsman in the survey department, but when in 1863 the Waikato Wars broke out, he enlisted in the Auckland Rifle Volunteers and saw much fighting in the Wairoa and other districts. When the war ended, he joined the Auckland District Army staff and after 20 years eventually achieved the rank of Colonel. And by the way, Arthur was a versatile and talented artist and quite a number of his pencil sketches and watercolours have survived, including some of the Maori Wars. What still intrigued us was where these Indian names came from and how we lived in Almora Road in a house called Simla, another Indian place name. To find out why, we have to go back to 1825 when in Newton Abbott in Devon, an Alfred Buckland was born. 25 years later, in 1850, he married Eliza Wallen and in that year they travelled to New Zealand. Alfred joined his elder brother William, who was already farming in the Mungary area, now known as Buckland Road. However, it was not long before Alfred started his own business activities, ranging from cattle dealing to buying and farming vast areas of land. This included many acres alongside the Tamaku River and this well-established suburb we now know as Buckland Beach. He also established the stock and station firm Alfred Buckland and Sons Limited, which had its headquarters in Albert Street. In Newmarket, he bought a large residential property with spectacular views of the harbour. One entrance is in Gillies Avenue and the other in Mortimer Pass, which is named after his mother's maiden name. By 1862, the house, Highwick, was considerably enlarged as his family became more than a pigeon pair. In 1866, his wife Eliza died, and Alfred remarried the following year. Between the two spouses, Alfred's progeny consisted of 14 daughters and 7 sons, a total of 21 mouths to feed. Records show that a daughter of Alfred Buckland, Mariamna, and here comes the link, married Arthur Morrow. His 1937 obituary in the New Zealand Herald states that he married Mariamna Buckland in 1877, so their respective ages then were 43 and 22 years. Upon their marriage, Alfred Buckland presented the couple with 12 acres of land across the road and had a house built there that was called Simla. I'm Dr. Ajit Singh. I'm a district court judge in Manikau. I live in Gilgut Road which is just around the corner from Almora Road. Simla is a hill station. Simla Township is on the slopes of Mount Everest with beautiful views of Mount Everest. It was the summer capital of the British under the British Raj 
where the British retreated during the summer months because it was very hot in Delhi and they treated Simla as its capital. However, it is still intriguing that he lived and died in Almora Road. That was in 1937, aged 94. His death certificate tells us that he was buried in St Mark's Cemetery in Remuera. In the 60s, all damaged stones were removed and the area turned into lawns. The location of all graves was carefully recorded and here is Lisa standing on his grave, saying hello to him. In the church is a large panel with the names of his fellow deceased and Arthur Morrow's name is obligingly pointed out by the resident reverend. After all this, we're still in the dark about these Indian names. But then a breakthrough as we just learned that Arthur had an older brother by the name of Robert Bowl Morrow. After extensive searching on the world scene, we found a family member in, of all places, a small town in the lower part of the North Island who kindly shared many family details about both Arthur and Robert Morrow. Yes, Robert had been in India. Yes, in the army. Yes, in Almora. We even got photos of him, one as a young man and another one as a not so young man. Morrow was born in 1836 in Longford in Ireland and saw military service in both the Crimean War in Russia and in India where he was for 19 years. Almora is another hill station, a township which has a population of about 54,000 people. Again, it is one of those hill stations where the British retreated during the summer months, during the British Raj. In 1877, he landed in Auckland, the year his brother married Mariamna Buckland, and stayed here for 42 years until his death in 1919, aged 83. His death certificate states that he lived at 24 Newton Road, Auckland, and was buried at the Anglican Cemetery just around the corner in Grafton. There was no mention of a spouse or children. We quote from a letter from Colonel Robert Morrow. The tigress was shot by me at El Mora in the Himalayas. The tigress was in the district for over eight years and she was called the Longrebag, lame tiger, as one of her forepaws was twice as large as the other. Police reports show that during the eight years she had killed over 73 people and consequently there was a large reward put on her head. 25 pounds or 300 rupees and I was the lucky one to scoop the pool. Just after I shot Langrabag, the natives came to see the dead tigress and salaamed me and touched my feet, which is a great honour among the natives. The Colonel's achievements accounted to more than shooting a total of 71 man-eating tigers as he spent a considerable time at Simla, the Army's headquarters. We now go back to Simla in Almora Road in Epsom. Here is much older Robert, Uncle Bob, visiting Arthur's house. The house was on an elevated part of his property just where the Southern Motorway is now. And City Council named the northern end Max Tung Place. However, the residents, including a descendant of Robert Morrow, objected, and the council renamed the little street Almora Place. As all residents are only too aware, this daily confuses couriers, taxis, visitors, and delivery people, and at some stage, even an emergency ambulance went to the wrong Almora Street. In a letter to a family member in Ireland, dated 2nd of January 1914, Arthur Morrow wrote, We have a pretty place, ten acres overlooking Auckland Harbour, which is a wilderness of stones and rocks when our house was built, but I worked hard at it and it is now surrounded by beautiful trees and flowering shrubs with oranges, lemons, guava, apple and nectarines and walnuts, they're bearing in profusion. The exhibition is going to be a great success. The grounds, part of the public domain between us and the water, occupy 57 acres. 
As I look at it, while I am writing, I am sure the buildings of various kinds are 500 or 600 yards in length, and it has a very pretty effect when lighted up electrically. Today, one of the few remaining trees is a large pahutakawa, or New Zealand Christmas tree, in Almora Place. If not planted, at least nurtured by the Morrow family. It is well over 100 years old, and the present owner of the property went to a great deal of trouble and expense to have the tree protected. Quite an asset to the neighbourhood. Talking about trees, you will remember the old photo shown earlier of Broadway depicting Highwick. On the left, you can see a cabbage tree which apparently had some significance to the Maoris. When it had to be removed, most likely by a then developer, either the Bucklands or Morrows took a cutting and planted it at Simla, where it is still growing. Now here's an interesting piece. This is an article in the Howick Post, December the 5th, 1957. The article is headed, The Grand Old Lady and refers to Mrs. Morrow, originally Miss Buckland, when she was 100 years old. The paragraph is called The Perilous Journey and gives you a picture of the way people travelled in the days. When next you enjoy a comfortable drive to Rotorua, imagine the advances made since 1870 when Mrs. Morrow, then 15, visited the pink and white terraces. The party travelled by boat to Tauranga and overland by buggy to Rotorua. They visited the thriving villages of Te Wairoa and Te Ariki, crossed Lake Tarawira by Maori Canoe and were poled up the warm Kaiwaka Creek to the terraces, which Mrs. Morrow described as wonderful, beautifully wonderful, a sudden thunderstorm, however, prevented their return across the lake, and after great difficulty their guide, the famous Sophia, gained admittance to a tapu Maori Wari, where the party were forced to spend the night. In the morning they met the rebel chief Tikuti, fleeing to the Urawira country after the Poverty Bay Massacre. He did them no harm other than to demand money, and apparently did not alarm them greatly, as Mrs. Morrow described him as being not a big man and not fierce looking. This then is the end of this tale. The only question remaining is why Arthur Morrow used these Indian names. Any suggestions? As for your scriptwriter, when his time comes, he intends to ask Arthur. 